Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko addressed on Ukraine the conflict and also ordered more troops to the south of the country by the border with Ukraine. The 33rd Intersessional Meeting of the Caribbean Community kicked off this Tuesday in San Pedro Belize. Caribbean heads of state will be discussing economic recovery and other important regional issues. Iranian President Ebrahim Rahizi met on Tuesday with the head of Syria's National Security Office Brigadier General Ali Mamluk. Hi, this is from the South Amber News and Cordillo Martin from the Tulsa Studios in Havana. We begin with the news. On Tuesday, Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko addressed on the Ukrainian conflict. Belarus does not participate and does not plan to participate in the special operation of the Russian Federation in Ukraine. According to Lukashenko, the meeting inspires cautious optimism and described the organization of negotiations between Russia and Ukraine as a thriller. The president also said that Russia launched a special military operation in Ukraine because it had no other choice for their own national security, the official Delta Belt and News Agency reports. In Belarus, air defense systems are put on alert to avoid blows of the back of the Russian forces. Now, Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko also said on Tuesday he had ordered more troops to the south of the country by the border with Ukraine. On the sixth day of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, Lukashenko told a meeting of his Security Council that he would be sending five tactical battle groups to protect the south. Group very strongly, and we have information that they are aiming at the penetration of sabotage group into our territory. Our the General Assembly of the United Nations resumed Tuesday the special emergency session on the conflict in Ukraine. All 193 members of the United Nations are meeting for the second consecutive day in the framework of an extraordinary emergency General Assembly to continue the debate on the special operation carried out by Russia and Ukraine, which aims to defend the civilian victims of the war in the Donbass region. During the day, the different delegations expressed different positions on the subject. Cuba is a country that defends international law. It is committed to the Charter of the United Nations. Cuba will always defend peace and an ambiguously respond uh, to the threat or use of force against any state. In the United Nations special session on the Ukrainian crisis, the United Nations representative for Venezuela, Samuel Moncada, issued an official statement calling for a peaceful solution in this issue. Mr. President, as a founding member of the United Nations, the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela is a firm defender of the purposes and principles enshrined in the founding charter of our organization, as well as in norms of international law. Mr. President, the situation in Ukraine has been broadly debated in recent years. In addressing this matter, our country, faithful to our diplomacy of peace, has called for a peaceful settlement of any dispute which might exist in the Eastern European region. In that spirit, in 2015, as a non-permanent member of the Security Council, we voted in favor of Resolution 2202, the package of measures for the implementation of the Minsk agreements. In that year, we built a diplomatic path agreed to by everyone to find a peaceful solution to the civil war in Ukraine. The United Nations Ambassador for Nicaragua, Jaime Hermida Castillo, also made an official statement calling for respect, sovereignty, and territorial integrity for all countries. 
Mr. President, Nicaragua reiterates its commitment to respect for sovereignty, territorial integrity, and security for all countries. We member states must unwaveringly comply with the purposes and principles of the UN Charter. This applies to all member states of the United Nations. We call for a de-escalation in tensions, bearing in mind the legitimate security interests which all countries of this region, and in particular the Russian Federation and Ukraine, deserve with the purpose of guaranteeing peace and stability in the long term in that region and beyond. On Tuesday, the European Parliament recommended giving Ukraine the bloc's candidate status. The decision followed President Volodymyr Zelensky's speech in the Parliament, where he called on the EU to prove that the Union is with Ukraine. The Parliament's resolution also demanded that Russia withdraws all its troops from the Ukrainian territory. The decision went down with 637 votes in favor, 13 against, and 26 abstentions. And from the European Parliament, new voices add up to the denouncement of the West's responsibility in the present situation in Ukraine. This time, Deputy Peter Bestrom of Germany spoke of the many warnings and alternatives expressed by Putin at the German Parliament some time ago. It is the NATO sphere, the one that approached the borders of Russia. And what is the price for this? Now your men die, both Ukrainians and Russians, and geopolitically, you push Russia into the arms of China. Russia was always a European government, and you pushed it into the arms of China. And don't you dare say that you were not warned. The Russians warned you 15 years ago, when Putin spoke here in this very place, in the Bundestag, and you all applauded. Sanctions imposed against Russia for its military operation will ultimately cause more damage to the United States and its allies, citing forecasts by a research group advising Chinese President Xi Jinping. Since 2014, Moscow has adapted to dealing with the West's measures. Ma Hui, a research associate at the Institute of Contemporary International Relations in China, whose research group is linked to the Chinese Ministry of State Security, said, wrote in an article that Washington and its allies will end up suffering for supporting Ukraine. The United States could also suffer future significant losses for providing economic and military aid to its allies, and Europe could be destabilized by removing Russian banks from the SWIFT international system. President of Venezuela, Nicolas Maduro, informed on his Twitter account about a telephone conversation he had with his Russian counterpart, Vladimir Putin. In the call, President Maduro expressed strong support for Russia, condemned the destabilizing actions of the U.S. and NATO, and emphasized the importance of countering the campaign of lies and disinformation launched by Western countries. The Venezuelan head of state also reaffirmed his firm position in the favor of understanding and dialogue as a way to preserve peace. Russia's Foreign Ministry Sergei Lavrov uh, criticized on Tuesday the United States and its allies for once again using double standards and criticizing Russia's special military operation in Ukraine. That of Russian diplomacy asserted that the United States and its allies are directly responsible for several violations of human rights and international humanitarian law as well as for crimes that caused thousands of victims in Yugoslavia, Iraq, Libya, and Afghanistan. Lavrov also claimed that the human rights mechanisms of the United Nations, uh, Council of Europe, and the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe lack the courage to react adequately to the flagrant arbitrariness of the Ukrainian authorities in the Donbass region. We're going to take a short break now. Please join us again after this. Hi, welcome back to From the South. The price of gas in Europe exceeds 1,400 U.S. dollars per 1,000 cubic meters. The price of gas on the European benchmark market, the Dutch TTF, reached 1,418.5 U.S. dollars, which is almost 24 percent higher than the previous day's record. According to experts, this behavior is due to the tensions caused by the crisis in Ukraine and the suspension of the Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline. 
They predicted that there may be a further increase in prices. President Joe Biden vowed to make Vladimir Putin pay a price for Russia's military operation, as he put it in Ukraine, in his first State of the Union address rallying allies abroad while also outlining his plans at home to fight inflation and the fading but still dangerous coronavirus. He reaffirmed his support to Ukraine and cataloged Ukrainians as an inspiring people. Russia's Vladimir Putin sought to shake the very foundations of the free world, thinking he could make it bend to his menacing ways. But he badly miscalculated. He thought he could roll into Ukraine and the world would roll over. Instead, he met with a wall of strength he never anticipated or imagined. He met the Ukrainian people. In addition, the United States president is also imposing economic sanctions against Russia as the European Union and other countries did after the military operation in Ukraine. Together, along with our allies, we are right now enforcing powerful economic sanctions. We're cutting off Russia's largest banks in the international financial system, preventing Russia's central bank from defending the Russian ruble, ruble, making Putin's $630 billion war fund worthless. We're choking Russia's access. We're choking Russia's access to technology that will sap its economic strength and weaken its military for years to come. Tonight, I say to the Russian oligarchs and the corrupt leaders, who built billions of dollars off this violent regime, no more. U.S. tech companies try to cut off Russia's information about the war situation in Ukraine. The war in Ukraine has placed large technology companies at the center of the battle between the West and Russia over information management. U.S. giant Meta, the group that owns Facebook and video platform TikTok, have announced a blocking of Russia today and Sputnik in the European Union following a request to combat pro-Russian disinformation. And in Uruguay, state-owned telecommunications company Antel suspended the Russian media outlet RT's broadcasting. The president of Antel, Gabriel Gudmendez, informed on his Twitter account that as a result of the military conflict between Russia and Ukraine, he decided to suspend the broadcasting of the Russian news media on the channel Veda TV. According to the executive, Russia today is at the disposal of the propaganda of Vladimir Putin's government with the aim of justifying Russia's military operation in Ukraine, an action condemned by the Uruguayan government. The Caricom 33rd Intersessional Meeting opened on Tuesday with leaders of the Caribbean community in Belize. The session between the heads of government of the Caribbean community is taking place in the town of San Pedro, and the multilateral meeting is expected to develop between Tuesday and Wednesday. The meeting will discuss several important challenges of the region, including the impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic, the advancement of the Caricom single market economy and climate change security, and the current situation in Haiti. Kicking off the 33rd intersessional meeting of heads of government of the Caribbean community in San Pedro Belis, uh, Secretary General of the regional organization, Carla Barnett, emphasized the resilience of the community. However, one thing we have learned over the 49 years of our existence is that we are a resilient community, bound together particularly in times of adversity. Such is this time. Just as the skills of the Caribbean Public Health Agency have guided us through the pandemic, the operations of the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency have been crucial in times of natural disaster. And the structures of the CARICOM Implementation Agency for Crime and Security and the RSS have, kept, have helped to keep us safe from external security threats. We have in place the tools that we can use to build back better from the social and economic damages of the pandemic. As Prime Minister of the host country for the 33rd intersessional meeting of CARICOM, John Briseño explained that international climate is riddled with crises, conflicts, and sufferings, and country, countries are facing climate change consequences with inadequate resources. This 33rd intersessional meeting is a particular consequential meeting we meet at a time when unprecedented and existential challenges coincide with our citizens' expectations for relief and prosperity. 
the international climate is riddled with crises, conflicts, and suffering. Every country, every region is managing the ACA, unprecedented challenges with the ACA, inadequate sources. Now, Argentinian President Alberto Fernandez addressed the nation this Tuesday speaking before Congress at the opening session of the new legislative period. He made an overview of the performance of his administration. In his speech, Fernandez said the Argentinian economy experienced growth throughout 2021. He also reported there was a 19 percent increase in production investment. Besides, he noted that tax collection has been growing for 17 consecutive months. Fernandez stressed that the main focus of his administration is strengthening social policies to enable a better quality for, of life for Argentinians. His government is also aiming at integrating popular economy into mainstream economy. In reference to the negotiations with the International Monetary Fund to refinance the debt acquired by the administration of Mauricio Macri, Fernandez assured that the new agreement does not imply adding a new debt to the existing one. The new agreement will not accumulate new debt to the one already taken on by the previous administration. It is a refinancing of that loan. Doing so has allowed us not to have to resort to our national resources. At this moment, to honor our commitments, money will come from the International Monetary Fund itself, which we will start paying for four and a half years from now. We can use that time to boost economic growth. The agreement does not solve our foreign debt problem, but it is an important step to that end. Now we have more news coming up after a final short break. Please stay with us. Oh, welcome back. Iranian President Ibrahim Rahizi met on Tuesday with the head of Syria's National Security Office, Brigadier General Ali Mamluk. The head of state and his high-ranking Syrian guest exchanged views on the latest status of lateral ties, especially in the diplomatic field, as well as the most important regional and international developments. During the meeting, President Rahizi pointed to the importance of Iran-Syria economic cooperation and stressed that in order to expand economic ties, the two countries should first strengthen their strategic relations. Syria condemned the political pressure and media defamation campaign carried out by the United States and its allies against Russia, an escalation that seeks to maintain chaos in the world at the service of the West's hegemonic agendas as Damascus portrays it. Let's see more on this. Damascus considers that all countries have the duty to stand up against Western policies orchestrated by the United States, which have become a severe threat to international peace and security, honoring that Syria not only express its support for the Russian special operation in Donbass, it also works to increase cooperation with Russia's allies, Iran, Iraq, and others fight against terrorist groups and the United States' intentions of re sowing the seeds of war in Syria. We have assessed the situation in Ukraine and have agreed to keep open the consultations over the situation, development and its repercussions. Likewise, we agree on the improvement of bilateral cooperation, even when we feel great satisfaction for the level of collaboration showed in the fight against terrorist groups that led to the expulsion of extremists who control large parts of a country. We're going to keep on building on this cooperation and we're going to consolidate it in many areas, mostly in the economy. Russia's special military operation in Donbass is a necessary step to cut off the West's attempts of lacerating Russia's interests and in national security. That is how Syrian authorities deem it, as they condemn Washington and its allies who seek to carry out their destabilizing plans by applying on Moscow the exact copy of the political script they used in Syria on their so-called war on terror and its financiers. There has been quite a fierce heightening of political pressures and media spins from the West regarding Russia. This cycle of slander portrays the same pattern applied in Syria since the beginning of the war in 2011, especially the false accusations that say civilians are being bombarded, all of this seeking to aggravate things to keep the crisis going and mobilize the world against Russia's special operation, but we believe that they will fall with Russia just as they did with Syria. The Syrian government stands firm on its belief that Russia's military operation in the Donbas region 
is to view Ukraine response to Moscow's right to defend itself and the principles of justice and humanity. Damascus sees the Russian incursion in the oppressed territories as an undertaking that poses the beginning of a global transformation that benefits the peoples of all nations in favor of the end of edge money and unipolarity. Environment ministers and other representatives from over 170 nations will take part in the three-day Hybrid Assembly UNAE5 meeting, meaning under the theme Strengthening Actions for Nature to Achieve the Sustainable Development Goals. Delegates were looking to advance a global agreement on plastic pollution amongst a series of draft resolutions on biodiversity and health, green economy and circularity as a resume of a fifth session in United Nations Environment Assembly that started in Nairobi, Kenya on Monday. Espen Barthé, the top speaker and leader at the Assembly, stressed that multilateral action is key to tackle plastic pollution. The resolution of plastic pollution and other pressing environmental issues will be formally decided by member states in the closing plenary meeting on Wednesday, March 2, 2022. We've come to the end of this news brief. Remember, you can find these and many other stories on our website at Tulsa English. You can also join us on social media for all the latest news. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Telegram. For Tulsa English, I'm Dio Martin. Thanks for watching.